Welcome to Eden Red World Food Day. For this third edition, we have the pleasure to invite you to the first online cooking class ever organized in live in a company. Today, all Eden Red partners and of course of our 6,000 employees will have the possibility to cook a delicious meal at the same time on the same day all around the world. Behind the funny objectives, this event is an illustration of Ideal Meal, our major pillar in our corporate social responsibility program. This program aims to sensitize in a positive way on healthy eating habits, showing concretely that it is possible to eat balanced food at an affordable price during lunchtime. Our group is committed into a very quick and strong move to digitalization. This event is also for us an opportunity to show that digital helps to be more powerful in our CSR activities as well as in our business activities. Now it's time to be a cooking chef for the next 45 minutes. I take this opportunity to thank warmly L'Atelier des Chefs, our partner, who has designed this tasty and healthy recipe. Your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to customize the meal with your own cultural habits. Be creative, add spices, herbs, or decorate your plates. And do not hesitate to share the results on social media with the hashtag IMD2015. And now, let me introduce you to Kathleen, or Atelier de Chef, chef for today, and uh, enjoy your meal. Mm -hmm. Welcome. I'm very happy to be cooking with all of you at the same time today. 6,000 people, quite an honor. Today, we're, we're going to be making a wonderful meal. We're making our, it's the ideal meal day cooking lesson. And we're going to be making a very light, very healthy dish, which can be actually consumed whether it be lunchtime or dinner time, depending on the time zone that you're cooking in. What we'll be making today is fresh chicken. So it's just a chicken breast that's going to be just poached in some hot water and a variety of fresh vegetables with some nice spices and some herbs and a little bit of sauce to make it all taste, taste wonderful. So today, I'm going to be using carrots, fresh carrot, cucumber, radishes, cherry tomatoes, and a little fresh lemon. Now you've had time, I'm sure, to prepare all of your ingredients, uh, so you're ready to be cooking right, right, right along with me. If you've got other ingredients, other fresh ingredients in your country, obviously, you're free to use them, and that's, you know, that's, what, that's sort of the interest of this whole cooking lesson. You're all around the country, all around the world, basically. You can be using the freshest ingredients that you can find um, you know, readily and easily um, within your country. So let's start with the chicken. First thing, we're going to be starting with you know, some very fresh chicken. Here I've got really nice chicken breasts, all right? Just natural chicken breasts. If you can, please try and get either organic, if it's available, or what we call free range. Make sure these chickens have actually seen a little fresh air <laughs> and they've run around a bit if you're able to find them. It's just a better quality of protein, all right? So that you know, it'll just be a little bit better for your health. Um, first thing we need to do is boil some water. Now, you know, because you're probably cooking in the office or in a place where you don't have a lot of utensils and a lot of equipment available, we're actually going to be able to make the entire recipe just using a kettle, which is amazing. So let's just warm up some water first. You're going to need quite a bit of water. So go ahead and fill up your kettle. Now, if you're cooking in a proper kitchen, which some of you may be, which is fine, you might just use a regular pan, fill it up with water, and bring it to a boil. We're going to need at least a liter and a half of water. So go ahead and fill it right up and bring it up to a good boil. Okay, so let's start you know, cutting our chicken. You're going to be needing now a nice cutting board. I want you to be cutting everything on the board. Nothing, no cutting in the air. It's a little bit too dangerous. And a good knife. All right, so you need you know, a nice um, sharp knife with a long blade if you've got it. If you've got just a regular table knife, you can do the same thing. It, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Now, what's going to be important here is that we cut very thin slices, all right, because the chicken is basically going to be poached in boiling water. So if we have large pieces, it's going to have a little difficulty cooking. So let's go ahead and just slide our knife along, along the chicken, making very, very nice thin slices, all right? You're going to be wanting to count approximately one chicken breast per person. That's enough protein. Now, that's enough good quality protein for one meal. Uh, we tend to eat a little bit too much protein, obviously. And this is plenty for one meal. Keep your hand nice and flat on the chicken so that you're not going to be cutting yourself. And you just slide the blade right along, right along the, 
your cutting board, all right? We're going to be needing four of these. So just go ahead and cut very thinly. There we go. Um, if you, you know, if you're working in a group, which I'm sure most of you are, just make sure everyone's got their, you know, their workstation set up. They've got their knives, they've got their chicken, that basically all of you are doing the same cut at the same time right now. Just nice thin slices. You know, quite easily. There we go. Mm. I don't really want you to making cubes actually at this at this point. Um, we, need, we need sort of sort of nice long thin slices, which are just going to be very very nice. Actually, when we're plating the dish. Okay. Now you have to make sure you've got clean hands. Obviously, you've all washed your hands before we started. Now, if you don't have um, access to soap and water, you've also got you know plenty of. Uh, different ways to wash your hands. You've got alcohol solutions, you know, different ways to make sure your hands are nice and clean and disinfected. You're cooking for yourself, but you're also cooking for your colleagues, which is basically what fine cooking is all about, being able to share it as well. Okay, you should all be about the same state, just about the same stage that I'm in right now. Should be on your fourth chicken breast, or, you know, depending on how many people you're, you're cooking for, each one should be cutting their own. All right, nice thin strips. There we go. Very nice. Now, you need to make sure you've prepared a large pan as well. Uh, it could be, you know, a, a pan that could go into the oven or a large bowl. Basically, you know, what you've got available. Here I've got a nice big glass pan uh, that's made out of a glass that actually can support high heat. Now, what you need to do is just place the chicken flat into your pan. All right, see how it's nice and thin? Uh, I've really, you know, cut it very, very thin, so it's going to cook quickly, which is going to be very, very nice. And the fact that we're cooking it in hot water will keep it very moist as well. You know, that's often something I hear in my, from my students is that when we cook chicken, it tends to get dry. Chicken breast, anyway, tends to get dry, which is very true. But if we're cooking it in a nice, you know, nice hot water, nice flavored water, it will stay moist. All right, so just make sure you don't overlap it. Uh, and that's why you need a nice big pan or a nice big bowl whatever you've got available, basically. There we go. And because we want to make sure that all, actually all the pieces of chicken are covered in water. So if they're, if they're overlapped, you know, some of them, they're going to be cooked more than others. So there we go. There we go. You know, again, if you're a big group of people doing this, you're going to need to prepare several pans, obviously. Okay. And just make sure they're all nicely, you know, placed into the pan and flat. So I'm going to let you go ahead and continue doing that. If you've got some very thin ones that are overlapped, that's fine. That will not be a problem. All right, there we go. Now, my water's hot. It's boiled. And I insist on the fact that it's got to be boiling water. It can't just be hot water. It can't just be water from the tap. That's not, not nearly hot enough. You know, actually, protein, animal protein is cooked at between 56 and 66 degrees, all right? And so to bring it up to that temperature, you really need to start with boiling water. All right, there we go. Now, I'm just gonna rinse my hands off because I have, you know, I have touched the raw chicken. Make sure you rinse your hands off regularly. You know, wipe them off with some paper towel. Something that you can throw away, actually. You don't wanna be using the kitchen towel or anything at this point. There we go. Okay, now, I want to give my chicken some flavor. Obviously, if I just pour sort of hot water on there, it's not going to have a whole lot of flavor. So this is where you're going to be able to become creative, all right? And depending on the country that you're in and, and the, different, uh, you know, the different ingredients that are available, um, especially the spices. There are some wonderful spices out there all over the world. Today, I'm using curry, a nice mix of curry, and I'm also using some dried pepper to give some really nice flavor. So I'm just going to cover the chicken in curry, Really nice curry, and keep a little bit for the dressing of the, for the plating afterwards, and a little pepper, some nice ground pepper. This pepper is really interesting. It's actually smoked pepper, kind of like paprika, almost like a smoked paprika, which is really, really nice, just delicious. It's going to give a lot of flavor. So go ahead, you know, make sure you put plenty, plenty of flavor into your chicken here. You're going to need it. 
Okay, this is wonderful. Now, what I want to do is cover it in the water. We're going to put a little salt as well. We need a little salt. Now, you know, you don't want to over salt your food, obviously. We know that, you know, too much salt is not particularly good for your health. But, you know, a little bit of salt is needed um, to bring out the taste in things. That's important. And here we go. I'm going to cover it with the very hot water. Okay, so good liter and a half of water. Careful not to burn yourself and cover it up. Now what's really interesting is as I'm pouring the hot water onto the chicken, it's already cooking it. It's already um, making the protein coagulate basically, which is pretty amazing. It's all, it's all about the temperature basically. There we go. Now we're fine. We're covered. Our chicken is covered totally in the boiling water, which is just perfect. Now just kind of set that aside. Make some room for yourself. Make sure you're not putting it in, a, in an area that's sort of in an open draft or near an open window because the water is going to cool off too quickly and we want to make sure the water stays nice and hot so that it cooks our chicken. Now I want to cover my water again so the, so the heat remains in. If you have a big dish, you can put a big dish over the top. If you've got like a pastry sheet, you can put that over the top. Here I've got some cling film. Some cling film that actually um, can, can sort of withstand the heat. Make sure it's not a cling film that's going to melt. <laughs> that would be a problem. So let's just cover it up in cling film, keeping all the heat inside, which is perfect. And our chicken's going to continue cooking that way, very simply. See, there we go. First step is finished. That's wonderful. There we go. We're just going to leave that aside. Make sure you give a little clean up. You know, as you're cooking, you have to make sure your, your cutting board is always nice and clean. That's important. And your hands as well. There we go, perfect. Now let's take, um, take care of our vegetables. Let's go to the next step now, here we go. We're going to have a mix of vegetables, as I said. We're gonna be using carrots, some fresh carrots. So really nice carrots. We're gonna be using some cucumber, about half of a cucumber, and some fresh radishes. Now what I'd like us to start off with is by cutting up our carrots, all right? So we can peel them. If you've got a peeler available, that's great. If you don't have a peeler, you could almost even use, you know, even, a, even just a table knife, and you can just sort of scrape the table knife over your carrot, or go ahead and use your good peeler to take off the, you know, the carrot peel. What's gonna be really important as you're cooking, whether it be at home, in the office, in a, in, in a great kitchen, wherever you are, just make sure you're very careful about hygiene. All right, so let's make sure we take away all of the, you know, you know, the peels that are dirty that could have been, you know, have a little dirt on them or could be soiling our food. Let's just make sure we get rid of that. So that way, your cutting board is always clean. There we go. Carrot's good. That's fine. That is perfect. And we're going to go ahead and cut our carrot now. All right, so the people, if you've got the carrot team, <laughs> I want you to all be, have your carrots peeled and ready to go. Another thing I'd like you to do as well is heat up the kettle again because we're going to be using boiling water as well to cook our vegetables. Or again, if you've got you know, access to a kitchen, you can warm up water in your pan, bring it to a boil. So we're going to need some very boiling hot water again. So I'm going to go ahead and heat up the water in my kettle, which is extremely practical. I'm going to give you a little hint, something you may not know, is when you heat water and bring it up to a boil, you always start with cold water. Make sure you take cold water from your tap and not hot water. And the reason for that is that the hot water that comes directly out of the tap is not always a particularly clean. Sometimes there are some impurities that stay in the, in, the, in, to, in the pipes of the hot water. So start with cold and then bring it up to a boil and you're sure you've got nice good quality water. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut our carrot first before taking care of the other vegetables. So, we're gonna cut the edges off, the ends, and we're gonna cut them in little tiny dices, all right? The reason we're gonna be cutting them so small is because they need to cook in the hot water. So we wanna make sure we have really nice, elegant pieces. So go ahead and cut your carrot in half, and then, again, flat on your board, cut it in two, you know, with a nice sharp knife, if you've got one, and then you're gonna put that flat onto your board. Now, here I've got a bigger piece, so I'm going to cut this one in two again so that I can have smaller pieces as I'm cutting through them, okay? Now, you can just cut little tiny dices just by sliding, sliding your knife through it, just, you know, sliding the, bla the blade through. You can also do something a little bit more fancy by cutting them maybe at an angle. Go ahead and be creative at this point because all of this is really going to be seen as we're plating the food 
as we're plating our dish in the end, we're going to be able to really see all these different shapes. What I need you to do is just make sure that you're cutting them in small pieces, all right? Because again, for the, for the, for the cooking time, we need to make sure they're all the same size and quite small pieces. Okay, so we can do, I like, I sort of like at an angle like this. I think that's kind of pretty. You know, real thin slices at an angle. And then you can take it again and just do, you know, if you want, again, just little cubes. Okay, you should all be just about through your carrot here. It's about, don't need a whole lot of carrot. It's just part of the, what we're calling the Riviera vegetable, <laughs> because they're just a nice mix of fresh vegetables, some crunchy, some soft, you know, just have a nice associations of color in all of our vegetables. Go ahead and get out a nice big bowl, Another, a bowl that can actually, you know, um, support the heat as well. Here I've got just, you know, a glass bowl, a Pyrex bowl. If you've got, you know, a big, you know, a big porcelain bowl or a metal bowl, that's fine. There we go. We've got our carrots already. We're also today going to be using some, some noodles, all right? We're going to be using these noodles that we call ramen noodles. What's great about these noodles is they're really easy to find. You can get them just about anywhere around the world. And they exist in a lot of different shapes and a lot of different flavors. You know, we, we use a lot of different flour to make them. This is wheat flour. These are just wheat flour. They're just dried, very simple, so very natural. No artificial ingredients. It's, just, it's basically just salt, water, and, uh, and, and wheat flour. You also have them with rice flour. Rice flour is absolutely delicious as well. Um, you've got them also sometimes in even cornstarch. They exist in a lot of different, different varieties throughout the world. And they're very easy to cook. So we're going to go ahead and put them right with our carrots. And we're going to cover them up with the boiling water. And basically, the, the noodles are already cooked, basically. We just need to rehydrate them with the boiling water. So go ahead, and the carrots. The carrots will take a little bit longer to cook than the rest of the vegetable. So that's why I'm going ahead you know, and putting the carrots in first. So let's cover it up totally. It needs to be emerged in the hot water. Make sure you get yourself a nice big bowl. There we go. I'm going to need even some more water, and I'm sure you will as well. So go ahead and fill up your kettle again. Just make sure it's all emerged in the hot water. OK, so go ahead and make a little bit more. Fill it all up. <laughs> again, if you've got a nice big pan full, you're going to need at least a liter and a half of water. Again, just like um, this, about, about the same amount we needed to cook the chicken. Okay, so let's go ahead and heat this up a bit. Now, we need to flavor this a little bit as well. So we're going to just put just a good pinch of salt. There already is a little tiny bit of salt in the noodles. So we want to be you know, careful, not too much. Again, just a little pinch to give some flavor. And while our water, you know, we're going to let our water heat up again so that we can cover up our noodles. All right, just make sure they're nice and plunged in there, which is perfect. And they cook very quickly, actually. They rehydrate quite quickly, which is great because it's, you know, a dish that you can make very rapidly. You know, when you get home late in the evening, it's a nice, it's a nice dish. And we can use it with so many different kinds of vegetables, different proteins. You know, there are lots of solutions. You can use some fish. You can use some shellfish. Um, whatever good vegetables you've got available would just be fine with that. Now what I'd like to do is take the cucumber. All right, so the cucumber team is now going to be, <laughs> be cutting the cucumber. Um, I want to peel it today, all right? It, depending on where you are around the world, some of you have got some great cucumbers, some long, some real thin cucumbers. There's a, um, uh, a type of cucumber that's called Noah that's really, really nice, and the skin is much thinner. So if you've got some nice Noah cucumbers, then you don't even have to peel it. Here I'd like to peel it just because the skin is a bit, um, the skin is just a little tiny bit thick, actually. So go ahead, we can use our, our peeler again, our good vegetable peeler. Okay. And just take off the skin really easily. A half a cucumber will be plenty for four people. The cucumber is going to stay nice and crunchy. That's what's great with this recipe, actually. You know, we're going to have some... You know, the carrots will be a little bit softer. The cucumber is going to stay nice and crunchy. The radishes are going to stay nice and crunchy. That's what's going to give the whole dish a really nice, fresh flavor. Cut off the edge. We need to cut it in two. And what's going to be important here is to actually scoop out the seeds. All right, because the seeds in a cucumber are actually going to give a lot of water. So go ahead and use just a little, you know, a teaspoon or a soup spoon and scoop out the seeds. Easily, whatever. Make it a little bit easier to digest as well. It's just a little bit nicer. 
It'll look nicer in the dish if you don't have the seeds in there. There we go. Voilà, très bien. Hop. Ok, parfait. Voilà. Alors, now let's cut. There we go. Now let's cut our cucumbers into a really, really nice shape. Alors, my water's ready. I hope you're ready. your water is ready as well. It should be boiling. And let's just make sure we cover up the noodles. All right, we need to, they need to be totally submerged in hot water. There we go. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So let's just put that aside for right now. While we, while we continue the rest of the recipe. All are perfect. Now the carrots are cooking and our noodles are rehydrating. Let's take our cucumber. Now we want to do some really nice cutting with our cucumber. Again, we're going to see it in the dish. It's all part of the plating of the dish. So again, this is where you can become a little bit creative. Um, you've cut it in two, lay it flat, and just go ahead and cut some very nice thin slices just by basically pulling your knife right along the cutting board. By doing so, you can be sure that you're not going to be cutting yourself. It's much more secure this way if you're cutting nice and flat onto the board. Now, what I want to see are just some really nice small pieces of cucumber. So we can go ahead and cut little tiny, little tiny cubes, little tiny slices. I'm going to go ahead and cut these at an angle. There we go. Just so we have just, you know, really nice little pieces. We don't want to be, you know, munching into a, or, you know, biting into a big piece of cucumber here. Again, we're trying to do something a little bit elegant, very simple dish, but by, you know, by, wor by working on each, ingredients, e each ingredient excuse me, separately, we're able to give each one kind of a special touch, which is going to be really nice. There we go. Okay, just go ahead and slide your knife right over it by keeping, actually, if you want to, you know, be cutting like a chef here, which is which is, you know, sort of the goal today. Make sure you keep the, the you know, the, the tip of your blade right on the board. You're going to lift up your knife and you be cut, you cut by pushing forward actually, just by sliding the blade right along the cucumber. You want to make sure you keep your fingers tucked underneath so that we're not going to be, no finger cutting today. <laughs> Nobody wants to be getting out the band-aids, right? So let's make sure you keep your fingers really tucked under and you're just going to be sliding your knife along. This kind of cutting here basically just makes a lot of noise and it's not very sure, it's not, very, it's not a very secure way of cutting. By keeping your fingers tucked under and just keeping, you know, the point of your blade onto the board, you really have no worries here whatsoever. In the beginning, it's a little bit hard to go fast, all right? Try and, you know, work on this gesture first just to make sure you're doing something nice and regular. And then what happens is, you know, once you really get good at the, um, at the cutting technique, then the speed comes, you know, then you can work on, on you know, getting a little bit more, more rapid. You've got time, take your time and cut them just nicely and basically all the same size. Voila. Okay, there we've got some really nice cuts on the bias, sort of, you know, at, a, at an angle. Now we can do some just straight ones as well. Some little cubes, maybe a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than the others. That way we'll have, you know, something sort of crunch into as well. And there we go. Look at, I'm getting very dynamic here. I'm doing two at the same time. <laughs> I bet some of you are already to that point, so that's good. Two, three at the same time would be absolutely fine. Just make sure you, you know, you tuck your fingers well underneath. There we go. It's great when you know how to use this cutting technique because anytime you want to do like big salads or you want to do a nice, a nice fresh soup in the evening, you're able to cut up all your veg really quickly this way and it makes it, you know, quite simple. There we go. Let's go ahead and take all of our cucumber now. Look at our carrots are already cooking. Our noodles are just rehydrating as we want them and we're going to go ahead and put a little cucumber in to be really nice as well. We can sort of stir it up a little bit, make sure they're in the water as well. Very nice, really nice. The, the noodles are already getting to a really good point, actually. They're getting, getting nice and soft, as, as we wanted. All right, that is perfect. Now we're going to work on our radishes. Okay, so here we go for the next veg. And the radishes are going to just stay nice and crunchy. Now these these are little French radishes. We call them pink radishes, actually. 
It all depends on which country, you know, in where you are and what is available. I know in some of the countries we have big red radishes, big round red radishes. We have black radishes. There are lots of different varieties of radishes. Some of them are a little bit peppery, a little bit, you know, a little bit sharp. Can be, those can be very, very nice as well. So go ahead and get a few radishes. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're going to cut off the stems. Now these little, these little stems, the little leaves of the radishes are wonderful. Now, if you've got very fresh, you know, spring, the little spring radishes, when the, you know, where the leaves are real tender, you can actually make a lot of wonderful things with them. I like to make pesto out of them. I like to make salads out of them. They're really, really nice. You can even make little soups, you know, little creamy soups with them. But they have to be very small and tender, sort of the real young spring radishes would be fine. Now let's do some really nice cutting with these as well. Again, they're all washed. I've washed everything beforehand, so you, you, you need to do that. I'm sure you've washed all of your ingredients already. Let's cut off the edges. We're good with this. Cut off the ends, cut off the tips. Some of those are even cute. We can even use them for a little, a little dressing or something. Some of the plating of the food. Okay. There we go. Now, if radishes are not in season where you are, then obviously you may pick something else. You know, that's fine. We just need something that's nice and crunchy. It could be celery. If you have some branch celery, that's always wonderful. Uh, you can replace these, all these vegetables with other solutions, you know. Um, I think the only thing that I wouldn't put in would be potatoes, maybe, and turnips, just because the potatoes would tend to get a little bit mushy or would possibly not have enough time to cook. Just make sure you take nice vegetables that you can actually use in a salad as well. Okay, if I've got big radishes like this, I'm going to go ahead and take them and cut them in two, and then maybe again into, again into two, to them into nice quarters, and then we'll do something else to them afterwards. So go ahead and cut them in two. You know, here we want to have something very elegant, just really nice pieces of radishes. You know, if you've got little tiny ones, then you can just leave them cut in two. Sometimes if they're very small, you could actually leave them whole which would be nice. You could actually even leave them whole and possibly with them, you know, with a little leaf and the stem, which would be kind of nice as well. Okay, perfect. Now you've noticed that we're actually adding our veg little by little. We're not putting them all in at the same time. It's just that because they don't all cook at the same time, basically. The carrots are the most, uh, the most dense, so they're the ones that need the most cooking time. Okay, now I'm going to take my big ones back here, and let's try and do something really nice with them. Let's make some nice some nice little pieces like this. And that way, when we're going to be plating our food, they'll just look beautiful. They'll stay because they're going to be placed just very rapidly into the hot water. They're going to stay nice and pink like this. That's what's really pretty. There you go. Again, this is your time to be creative. You can sort of decide how you want to cook them, how you want to cut them, but basically keep them whole. It's just, again, we don't want too big of pieces because if they're too large, they'll be a little bit a little bit too crunchy and a little bit too big compared to the size of the other vegetables. There we go, perfect. And let's go ahead and add these now into our veg. Okay. There we go. Look at that, even that, even this way looks beautiful. All these beautiful bright colors, I just love it. Let's go ahead and mix a little tiny bit if you've got a fork or a spoon. There we go, really nice. I think at this point, because I've been adding vegetables, I'm going to put a little tiny bit more salt as well, just to give a little more flavor. Now look at this, we are perfect here. We've got all our vegetables and our noodles just rehydrating and cooking up, you know, very calmly, very gently in this nice hot water. Um, you don't have to cover this, this is fine. The water was, we've got enough depth of water so that the water will stay very nice and hot. Our chicken is cooking, it's just fine, I can see it. It looks wonderful. I can't smell it because I've got the plastic film over the top, but you know, I know that it's gonna taste absolutely wonderful. Anyway, I like, I like the color it's got. It's got a really nice vibrant yellow color, and that's thanks to the curry. So that is absolutely perfect. We're almost there. You guys are doing great. You're doing absolutely great. Ah, I know something. I need to grab something out of my refrigerator. I have kept the, the fresh cilantro, coriandre, or coriander, in the fridge because I want it to stay nice and crispy. So I'm going to go ahead and grab it. It's a, good, it's a good idea to keep your fresh herbs really chilled. That way they won't, you know, they won't be wilting or anything. So here we've got, we've got some really nice cilantro, all fresh, all green, the way we like it. Perfect. 
Now, again, you may use other herbs as well. We, we'll talk about that just in a second. Um, what I want us to do now is start with the last step of the recipe. And we're going to work on the, the sauce. We're going to make a very nice salad dressing, a really simple dressing, but really nice and flavorful. We're going to make a nice little vinaigrette. A very nice, flavorful vinaigrette. And this vinaigrette we're going to be making with fresh tomatoes, little cherry tomatoes. And depending again where you are, you may find some different colored tomatoes. If you've got green tomatoes, go ahead. If you've got some nice yellow tomatoes, just make sure we're in season here. If you're a little bit out of season for tomatoes, go ahead and use small ones. Go ahead and take the little cherry tomatoes, because when vegetables like this are actually fruit, because a tomato is a fruit, um, when they're smaller, they'll always be a little bit more flavorful. There we go. Let's cut them in two. In this direction, actually, you don't want to cut them into um, in the center. We want to do it in the up, from top to bottom, basically. It's just a little bit nicer looking. That way, you cut you know all of the uh, all of the seeds in half. Okay, perfect. There we go. Lots of tomatoes because the tomatoes are going to give this nice crunchy, sort of acidic flavor to our dish. Going to add a beautiful touch of color. And they're also going to flavor our nice, our nice vinaigrette. Now, when you make a salad dressing, there are basically always two components. There's a component that is going to be sort of the, the oil or the, you know, the, the liquid or, or fat part, which would be either you know, olive oil, any type of oil bowl that you have available, again, depending on where you are. For those who are cooking with me in Asia, you might have wonderful sesame oil for instance, which would just be fantastic. Olive oil, it could be peanut oil, it could be grapeseed oil, you know, a good quality oil that you've got available. You always need some oil and you need something acidic. It can be vinegar, it can be citrus, it can be a variety of things that are going to give that little bite to your sauce. So today I'm going to use regular lemon, just a nice yellow lemon. We're going to use the juice. So what you need to do is just kind of run it, run it under your hands like this. Roll it along your cutting board to bring the juice up to the surface. And from there, we're just going to cut it in two and go ahead and juice it. Now, if you don't have a juicer, that's absolutely fine. What I like to do is just sort of pick it with a fork, and I'm going to use my hand as um, almost like a sieve and push it through my hand. That way, my hand is going to, to catch all the little seeds in case. Half a lemon will be fine. If you've got lime, lime would be wonderful as well. You know, something really nice in-season citrus that you've got available would just be fine. There we go. Perfect. We've got our lemon juice. Oh. Now we need a little salt, a little fine salt, some pepper. If you want to add other, you know, herbs, you're perfectly, you know, you're, you're perfectly willing to do that. No problem. If you want to put some other seasonings, that's fine. If you've got some great curry, if you've got some, some sharp pepper, you can do that as well. And then we're just going to finish with the oil. When you make this kind of a sauce, it's always, we first put the acidic ingredient, whether it be vinegar or citrus, and we end up, we finish with the oil. That's very important. It's very important to do it in that, in that, uh, in that order because it would enable you to make a little emulsion. There we go. Perfect. Our sauce is all ready. That's wonderful. Now I want us to take some fresh herbs. Remember, I just pulled them out of the fridge so they're nice and crunchy and nice and green. Here I've got cilantro, really nice cilantro. Um, very, very easily available throughout the world. So go ahead and use that if you can find it or anything else. If you'd like to use fresh parsley, if you'd like to use uh, tarragon, you may use any sort of nice, uh, nice herb that you've got available. Basil, if you've got some nice fresh basil. Uh, just let, make sure it's nice and fresh. Some of the frozen herbs or the dried herbs won't just, you know, they won't give quite as much flavor. I'm just going to pull off the, the, the leaves, actually, and keep the stems. I always keep my stems. I always keep the herb stems for other things, actually. They're really flavorful. So I like to use them when I make broths, when I make different kind of sauces. Sometimes I just even freeze them so that I can use them to flavor different, different dishes that I want to make later on. Okay, that's, that's going to be perfect. Let's take this away. Don't need this anymore. That's perfect. There we go. And we've got all of our little, our little cilantro leaves all ready. Okay, now you should be at the same, you know, the same position I am. Look at our, look where we are. We're, we're nearly finished. We've got our chicken cooking. We have got all of our vegetables cooking and our noodles are nicely rehydrated. We've made our wonderful sauce, our nice vinaigrette. Smells fantastic. We've got our fresh herbs all ready. 
Okay, that's absolutely perfect. Now what we need to do is just clean up a little bit. Give a little wipe off to your, you know, to your workstation. And we're just about ready to plate our dish. I don't know about you, but I'm getting very hungry. It all smells absolutely delicious. <laughs> getting very, very, very excited to taste it all. Okay, let's keep our salt, let's keep our pepper. We'll keep some of our little, um, our little spices as well. And I can go ahead and take off my, my cutting board. And here we go. All right, let's come back to our chicken now. Have a look at our chicken and see where it's at. Okay, go ahead and take off the cling film or, you know, the cover, whatever cover you put on it. And there we go. It looks absolutely fantastic. It looks fantastic and it's ready. It's thoroughly cooked through. It's going to be very, very moist and delicious. And that is just perfect. Now, if you've got some tongs, that'll be fine. You may use that. Otherwise, just a fork. You know, a fork would be fine as well to get them out. All right, let's have a look at our veg. There we go. Our veg and noodles are perfect. Look at our, our noodles are just perfectly rehydrated as they're supposed to be. I'm very happy with that. Now we need, to, um, we need to drain them off. So if you've got a colander, go ahead and use a colander. If you don't have one, then you can use something else. You can actually just, you know, use two bowls, pour them from one bowl to the next. There we go, how nice. Or just, you know, be very carefully pour them out by holding the bowl up against the side of your, the side of your sink. There we go. Look at the vegetable are perfect just crunchy the way we wanted them. There we go. This is all really, really nice. <laughs> it's a nice quantity too, so you're all ready to have a wonderful meal. Go ahead and get yourself out a nice bowl or a nice plate. There again, you can be as creative as you want. It can be a soup bowl, it can be a salad bowl. You can use, you know, a, you know, a nice white dinner plate. It's up to you to choose. Uh, it's your choice on this one. So here we go. Now let me show you some really interesting ways to plate this. Here I've got this funny little fork here. <laughs> uh, it's what we call, um, it's basically a serving fork. And what it's going to help me to do is grab a bunch of noodles like this. I just sort of plunge it down into my noodles. If some veg comes with it, that's fine. All right, it's a little bit warm, so be careful. Now, up. What you want to do is turn it around this fork by holding your hand underneath it. And this is going to enable us to make a really, really nice sort of a little nest, a little nest of pasta. That's what's nice. There we go. Just turn it around. Perfect. If you've got a big fork as well, that'll do, that'll do the job. Look, you go. Here we go. Into my bowl. And I'm just going to let it fall down gently like this. And there we go. I've got a really, really nice little, little nest of pasta, which is wonderful. Okay. And from there, I'm going to grab my chicken, my wonderful chicken. Wow, perfect. There we go. Because again, we cooked it, so we, we cut it so finely, it's all, it's all cooked. It smells absolutely fantastic. Make sure you just, you know, use it with a fork, drain off some of the excess water because you don't really want the water in there. Wow, yum. <laughs> the curry really did its job here. <laughs> the curry and, and the peppers and the, and the really nice uh, smoked peppers have really done their job here. Go ahead and, you know, serve generously. You need some, you know, a good quantity of protein here for each person. There we go. Fantastic. Fantastic. You can even turn them around a bit. There we go. I think when you, I'm hungry, I want one more little piece here. <laughs> there we go. Great. There we go. Now let's take our veg. Put that aside. Each person should be plating their own dish here so they can, you know, really show their creativity. I'm going to grab myself a spoon, and now let's go ahead and dig in and get some of the great vegetables here. Look at this. All of our nice, look at our radishes. There we go. Let's put all our vegetables just around the side like this. The little carrots are going to stay nice and crunchy. Absolutely fantastic. Here we go. We've got the cucumber as well. That's what I love about this recipe is the vegetables do not get all soft and mushy, you know, <laughs> just something no one likes. You know, they keep their color. They were just cooked in, you know, some nice hot water. Just basically, you know, keeping that crunchy, nice color about them, which is something we really, really like. There we go. Oops. Go ahead and put lots of vegetables in. This is, you know, wonderful, a wonderful, healthy meal for you. Very light. There we go. Perfect. That's wonderful. Now let's go ahead and grab our nice uh, dressing, our tomatoes. Here we go. Again, this is what's going to give sort of the crunch to it. So we've got this mix of, you know, of cooked vegetables and raw vegetables. That's really nice as well. Riviera. <laughs> Riviera vegetables. 
which is just nice, huh? Makes you think of the south of France. So we've got all these wonderful colors. That's what I really like. There we go, perfect. Okay, wonderful. Let's grab a little sauce here as well. We've got our, our olive oil that's nicely flavored with the lemon and the tomato, salt and pepper. And go ahead and put just a little sauce over the top. A little more. <laughs> Make it even better tasting. There we go. That's perfect. And let's finish up with our great fresh cilantro. There we go. We'll add a nice couple little nice pieces, you know, all fresh and bright green. That's fantastic. Look at, I've got a little more cur curry here. I'm going to grab a little curry in my fingers here and just sort of, you know, put a nice little line of curry over the top. There we go. Now that is perfect. <laughs> that is perfect. Our poached chicken and Riviera vegetables with our wonderful spices is all ready. I hope it's all ready for you as well. And we can finally get to the table and taste it, which is you know, probably the best part of the day anyway. <laughs> so I hope you're all able to follow, the, you know, follow the, the class and you're all up to the same point. You've got your wonderful dish all set. And now I'm going to bring it to the table because I am very, very excited to taste it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Follow me. Wow, Kathleen, <laughs> oh, go, it looks you amazing. You've been very patient. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Patient. And, and if you want to complete that dish with something to finish your, your, your lunch, well, what can we add at the end, like a fruit or? Well, we, sure, we, you know, we, we're talking about a really well-balanced meal here. We've got some protein, we've got, you know, we've, got, uh, we've got some pasta, and we've also got fresh vegetables. What we're missing here is probably just a dairy. All right. So it can be finished with a yogurt or a nice piece of cheese, and then fin finished up with a fresh piece of fruit. Perfect. And you're set. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kathleen. You're and welcome. So Thank you. Enjoy your meal. <laughs>